It's time for Northwestern Outdoors Radio, the award-winning show that covers fishing, hunting, and all sorts of outdoor recreation here in the great Northwest. Northwestern Outdoors is brought to you every week by Max Lure Company, a legacy of innovation since 1969, by Loophole Optics, America's optical authority, by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors, by Wallawa County, nature is on display in Northeast Oregon, and by The Real News, your fishing resource. Also by Shiloh Inns and Suites, providing you with affordable excellence. And by Mardon Resort, the place for fishing, hunting, and more in eastern Washington. And now, it's time to head outside with your host, John Cruz. I want to start off the show by thanking each and every one of you who entered our Christmas gift giveaway contest last weekend. The response seems to get bigger and bigger every year, as do the number of prizes we give away. We love to do this for you as a way of saying thanks and Merry Christmas and only wish we had enough gifts to give to everyone who entered this year. We've got a great show for you this week. We're covering not just fishing and honey, but also snowshoeing, an innovative new invention shotgunners are going to like, and a fascinating dose of outdoors news covering everything from weird high-tech hunting violations in Idaho to the misuse of salmon recovery funds in Oregon to a hunter versus wolf encounter in Washington that was not released as news by the Department of Fish and Wildlife, but instead by the Stevens County Cattle Association. On any given week, any of these three would be top stories, but this time around, they're all going to be sharing the spotlight. Scott Marchant is going to be one of our guests. That well-known hiking guidebook author out of Boise is going to talk to you about the fun you can have on snowshoes this winter and suggest a few places to try it out in the gem state. Scott also has a brand new hiking calendar you're going to want to hear about and it's something you might want to order for your friends this Christmas. I'll give you a hint on his website. It's hikingidaho.com. Kevin Weir is the man we're going to be talking to about a new invention shotgunners may not just like, but love. He's come up with something called the Wide Angle Choke Tube, and it may be a real game changer for hunters and target shooters. If you own a shotgun, you're going to want to hear about this. In addition to this, Lance Murs is going to join us for a special extended Max Minute where he introduces a brand new walleye rig for Max Lure Company that I think is absolutely going to slay the walleye. Throw in field reports from guide Anton Jones of Daryl and Dad's Guide Service in North Central Washington, Brad Snook from the Sports Corral in Joseph, Oregon, and coverage of the annual Audubon Christmas Bird Count in Montana. And we've got a bunch of outdoors information coming your way. And if that isn't enough, we've also got some upcoming events to tell you about at the end of the show covering everything. From sled dog races to candlelit cave tours to Christmas cheer with your choice of a woodsy or watery feel. But before we get any further into what promises to be a jam-packed show, David Sparks has a fascinating piece about using birds to hunt other birds or game animals, game animals as big as wolves. It's all part of our weekly edition of Sportsman Spotlight, brought to you by Shiloh Inn & Suites, the hotel chain that is there for you during the holidays and every day, providing you with affordable excellence. Hunting wolves and birds with birds, David Sparks, Sportsman Spotlight. In a recent meeting of the North American Falconers Association, Ben Woodruff and his 12-year-old female golden eagle named Holly showed up to talk with sheep ranchers. It turns out that Ben's a very successful trainer, and through his program, he can orient these birds of prey to hunt and kill wolves. Even now in Mongolia and Russia, they're still hunting wolves with golden eagles, the same kind of eagle, so they're capable of doing that. But yeah, people have been training eagles for over 5,000 years. It's a very well-documented, well-established form of hunting. Also present was Jim Hamilton, who trains peregrine falcons to hunt other birds. This is a peregrine, but he was caught here in Utah. So we've trained this bird that if I take the hood off, he thinks it's killing time. So I can't pull the hood off because then it jacks him up. These guys kill different things than the eagles do. The peregrine is the fastest diver. They've recorded them up to 300 miles an hour. They'll get up anywhere between 800 to 1,000 feet up in the air. And as you flush the birds out, say we're hunting sage grouse, they actually won't grab the sage grouse. They'll actually come down and punch it. They'll come down and hit it and knock it to the ground. That's how they get those. What's the biggest prey that these guys will take on? The biggest one on these guys that they're mainly hunting is the sage grouse. That's the biggest bird. Right now we're training him on ducks. The teal and the mallard duck. The mallard duck's the biggest one he's taken. I don't know about you, but what an exciting alternative to hunting upland birds and waterfowl. Watching these falcons swoop down at warp speeds and punch, no shotguns necessary, it's just pure adrenaline. This is David Sparks for Sportsman Spotlight. 
Confused by so many national brand hotel reward programs, blackout dates, expiration dates, different points for different hotel rewards, and gimmicks? At Shiloh Inn Suites Hotels, it's simple. No blackout dates for any rewards stay. If we have a room available, it's yours. Hi, I'm Mark Hemstreet, owner of Shiloh Inns. As a rewards member, you'll receive free room upgrades, a dedicated personal agent to help book your stay, points that don't expire, points that can be used for free nights at any one of our beautiful hotels or donations to your local school or free airline tickets, and much more. And as a special bonus, you'll earn 100 free bonus points just for signing up. From your very first stay, you receive free Wi-Fi, free breakfast at most locations. The kids stay free. We don't charge ridiculous resort or parking fees. And we're dog friendly. Shiloh Inns, affordable excellence. American owned and proud of it. Ducks Unlimited is the leading waterfowl and wetlands conservation organization in the world. Here in Idaho, we've lost nearly 76% of our wetlands. Ducks Unlimited is working to stop that loss. In Idaho alone, DU has restored and conserved over 27,000 acres of wetlands. Learn more about the benefits of wetlands and what Ducks Unlimited is doing for Idaho's future. Visit ducks.org slash Idaho. Welcome back to Northwestern Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. I know that all of you hikers out there are probably sad. You're thinking hiking's over until springtime, but guess what? You're wrong. With us here to tell you about hiking in the winter here in the Northwest is Scott Marchant. He is the author of several guidebooks about hiking in the great state of Idaho. You can find out more about him on his website, hikingidaho.com. Scott, Merry Christmas. Great to have you on board again. Merry Christmas to you, John. Good to talk to you again. So tell me something, Scott. It's winter. There's snow all over the place. How are hikers going to get out there in this sort of stuff? Well, it's called snowshoeing, and, and uh, essentially snowshoeing is basically strapping on a pair of snowshoes, putting one foot in front of the other, and walking. It's really no different than hiking. You know, snowshoeing, people think there's a learning curve, kind of like skiing, but it, there really isn't at all, is there? No, not at all. If you can walk, you can snowshoe. Snowshoes have one purpose, and that is to float on the top of snow. And as long as you have snowshoes, you're ready to go for snowshoeing. Do you like to do a lot of snowshoeing yourself in Idaho? I do. I, uh, I snowshoe. It, it, I'm not much of a downhill skier, and uh, it helps uh, make the winter uh, go a little faster. I understand completely. Well, let's talk just very briefly about snowshoes. I mean, back in the day, you had those uh, like wicker snowshoes that you would see the, uh, the trappers and people up in the great white north wear. Uh, now you see much more compact snowshoes being worn and much more modern materials. You know, do, do you have to worry about what kind of snowshoe to get, or is it as simple as just going to the local store and just asking for some advice? Yeah, snowshoes have, have made tremendous progress in the last couple of decades as far as uh, the bindings and the weight, uh, particularly with aluminum now rather than the old wooden snowshoes. Um, I, I do recommend that most people just go to a sporting goods store and talk to their uh, to their to the sales rep at a or salesman at a at a retail store. Okay, that seems easy enough. So you're going to get your snowshoes, and folks are really not that expensive. And then you're going to wonder, where the heck am I going to go? Now, when it comes to Idaho, I know you are tuned into that very fact. What are a couple places, or where are a couple places, you like to snowshoe in the gem state? Well, I live in Boise, so uh, a lot of my uh, experiences are in central Idaho. But uh, there's some great snowshoeing in McCall, uh, up in the Idaho City Park and Ski Area. Um, even catch them up at the Galena Lodge. And most of these areas have uh, some groomed trails. And, um, you know, anywhere that you see snow, you can basically just start walking it just as you would with hiking. So tell me a little bit about the, the trail systems available for snowshoers. Do, do you really want to look for those groomed trails, or is it okay to just take a map and a compass or a GPS and kind of go off trail? I think that really gets down to the how comfortable somebody feels with the outdoors. It's no different than hiking. A lot of people feel comfortable finding a lake that's off trail, but uh, they need to know how to use a compass and uh, read a map. It's the same thing with snowshoeing, and obviously your dangers are a little higher with snowshoeing because of the, the low temperatures. But most of the areas, like Ponderosa State Park, has about three miles of groomed trails specifically for snowshoes. Uh, nice. Drake Mountain Ranch near McCall has the same. So most of these areas even catch them at the Galena Lodge. They have specific trails that are groomed specifically for snowshoers. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Well. 
So, folks, you're listening to Northwestern Outdoors Radio. We're talking to Scott Marchant. We're talking about snowshoeing in Idaho, a great way to pass the winter until you can get those hiking boots back on in the spring. So, Scott, let's talk about easy snowshoe hikes for those of us that are just kind of breaking into the sport. Any recommendations? On Rosa State Park, outside of McCall. They have three miles of groomed trails. You can also go on the, uh, there are some trails that are groomed for uh, cross-country skiing, and you can, can snowshoe to the side. You don't want to get inside of the grooves for uh, for, snow, for uh, cross-country skiing, but uh, the, the terrain there is relatively flat. Uh, you have great views of, uh, of the lake, and um, it's just a fantastic area, a lot of old growth forest. It's a, it's a wonderful place to, for easy snowshoeing. Oh, sounds fantastic. Avalanche awareness, probably something we need to touch on, too. That can be a real issue if you're out in the backcountry snowshoeing. Yes. And most most snowshoe trails that are built, that are groomed at, at places like the state parks and Idaho uh, City Park and Ski, they're typically placed in areas where the danger of avalanche is pretty low. When you go off trail, that is that is where you really need to be aware of uh, avalanche danger. And, and if you're going to do that, I would recommend people take a, uh, a course in avalanche uh, awareness, which REI puts on one, and, and you can also take a much more extensive course. A lot of outfitters put those on, too. But typically, you want to be aware of, of any angle that's above 30%. That's where you're going to get into uh, avalanche danger. All right. Let's go ahead and switch gears a little bit, Scott, because I, I know that you have written quite a few books, but something else you produce besides your books is a is a marvelous calendar, a 2015 wilderness calendar. I personally think this would be a great gift for Christmas. Tell our listeners more about it. Uh, I came out with the calendar in 13 was the first calendar, and it's kind of changed a little bit over the years. But basically, I take a photograph from a trail somewhere in, in Idaho and then explain how to get to that photo regarding the hike. And in this year's calendar, the 2015, in the winter months of December, January, and February, I actually have snowshoe routes with suggested snowshoe uh, routes for people to do in the winter months. Love it. You know what I love about your calendar is that, you know, I'm, I'm used to the typical calendar. In fact, I'm looking at one right now, your typical calendar. Nice picture, has the dates, has, the, has you know, the holidays, and that's it. But I love the fact that you actually have route descriptions, so it's it's a kind of a combined calendar and, and monthly hiking guide to boot. Yes, it's uh, it, it, the information will have basically how long the hike is and what kind, whether it, from a difficulty level, if it's easy, moderate, or very strenuous. And there's quite a few range of hikes for different people and snowshoes. For instance, one of the, the December photo in the 15 calendar is a, a picture I took from, a, photo, a photograph I took from Galena Summit, which is in between Stanley and Ketchum. And it's just a fantastic, it's a non-groomed trail, but it is probably one of the most uh, beautiful views in central Idaho. So how hard is it to get there? Tell me a little bit more about that hike. The actual snowshoe route is from the summit. So it's uh, almost uh, exactly 30 miles north of Ketchum and about 30 miles south of Stanley. And uh, you can park on the side of Highway 75 and you basically go west along the ridge line and from the ridge line you will see views of the Saltus, the white clouds the boulder mountains it's almost as though you're on an island in the sky the views are just fantastic up there and you can hike back about or snowshoe back about two and a half miles before the terrain gets uh, quite a bit more strenuous okay well there you go folks and that's just one month that you're going to find there on this calendar what is the actual name of the calendar so people can go ahead and, and kind of find it, and then I'm going to ask you where people can find it. Uh, the calendar is available on my website, hikingidaho.com. It's also available um, on, through Amazon, and it's called the 2015 Idaho Wilderness Calendar. All right, folks, again, it's the 2015 Idaho Wilderness Calendar. If you have somebody in your family here in the Northwest that loves to hike, this would be a fantastic gift. Scott is a great photographer and does a wonderful job describing the trail systems here in the Northwest, particularly in the state of Idaho. He's also got some books you want to check out as well. Find them at hikingidaho.com. That's hikingidaho.com. That will go ahead and give you all sorts of information about all sorts of great hiking guides. And again, those calendars would be a great Christmas gift. Scott, we've got to go, but I do want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And thanks for sharing some winter hiking ideas with our listeners on Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Thank you, John. Snow blankets the ground and the air is crisp and clear. 
Welcome to the Winter Wonderland of Wallowa County. The sun sparkles on the eagle caps and life slows down a little. A quiet journey into the backcountry means donning your snowshoes or cross-country skis. For more adventure, bring your snowmobile and experience 150-plus miles of groomed trails and breathtaking wilderness views. When the sun sets, experience some of Northeast Oregon's finest cuisine and stay at one of our quality overnight accommodations. Wake up to the world in Wallowa County. Your morning begins at wallowacountychamber.com. It's the holiday season, and what better way to celebrate than with a year-long subscription to The Real News, dedicated to the accurate coverage of fishing issues throughout the Northwest for over 25 years. The Real News is the perfect gift for the reading angler. Just log on to therealnews.com and go to the subscription page. As a special bonus, we'll throw in a vinyl Real News sticker if you mention Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Order now and make someone happy far beyond the holidays. Yeah, you, the guide, outfitter, or outdoors business owner who's listening to Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Have you ever thought of becoming a sponsor of our show? We've got local sponsor opportunities at all 50 of the stations that carry Northwestern Outdoors every week, and we've got some network opportunities too. If the outdoors is your business, we can help you with your advertising needs. Contact me, John Cruz, through our website at northwesternoutdoors.com for more information. That's northwesternoutdoors.com, helping you get the word out about your outdoors company we're back with john cruz on northwestern outdoors radio it's time for another max minute fish on brought to you every week by max lure company we've got big big news about a brand new lure that is going to slay the walleye this winter with us here to tell us more about it lance Murs. lance lay it out there john we are super excited about this new product it's called the Smile Blade Spindrift Walleye. And I wanted to say that slow because everybody's going to be asking for it because this catches walleye constantly. It comes with a size one, and I'm going to say it slowly again, a size one spindrift hook. And it's made by VMC. But the cool part about this is that it has an integrated swivel to hook system. So that means that the swivel is free flowing and the hook is free flowing. Gives you a lot more action and wobble in the water. It really, really slow speeds. It's a very unique hook, folks. It reminds me of the, the slow death hooks that are becoming so popular with both trout and walleye anglers. But this swivel that's part of the hook itself is something I've never seen before. What else is part of the Smile Blade Spindrift walleye rig? Well, it comes with our our you know our standard beads that are all high UV, and then we also have a pill flow in between those beads. To top it all off, we have our world famous Smile Blade Spinner. It's a 1.1, and these new lures that we have come in eight different colors. So it matches the forage base for any type of walleye fishing that you're gonna do. It's fantastic. Again, folks, it's the Smile Blade Spindrift Walleye Rig. Expect to see this in stores in January, just in time for those big, big walleye that you're going to be able to find in the Columbia River and other waters here in the Northwest. Find out more about it at maxlure.com. It's the holiday season, and what better way to celebrate than with a year-long subscription to The Real News, dedicated to the accurate coverage of fishing issues throughout the Northwest for over 25 years. The Real News is the perfect gift for the reading angler. Just log on to therealnews.com and go to the subscription page. As a special bonus, we'll throw in a vinyl Real News sticker if you mention Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Order now and make someone happy far beyond the holidays. Want to put a smile on your face? Start off by putting a smile blade from Max Lure Company on your line. Max smile blades come in different sizes and spin at slow speeds, not like those metal blades on other lures. Buy them separately or on ready-made rigs like the Wedding Ring Spinner, Double Whammy, Wally Pop, and more. Smile blades work for trout, bass, walleye, as well as other species, and when that fish hits, you'll have a grin on your face that won't go away. The Smile Blade, only from Max Lure Company. Psst. Yeah, you, the guide, outfitter, or outdoors business owner who's listening to Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Have you ever thought of becoming a sponsor of our show? We've got local sponsor opportunities at all 50 of the stations that carry Northwestern Outdoors every week, and we've got some network opportunities too. If the outdoors is your business, we can help you with your advertising needs. Contact me, John Cruz, through our website at northwesternoutdoors.com. That's northwesternoutdoors.com, helping you get the word out about your outdoors company. Pheasants Forever is working hard every day to ensure there's more wildlife habitat for the future. To join us, 
Go to pheasantsforever.org. We start off this segment with a strange story out of Idaho where technology, ethics, and the law collided on a recent October deer hunt when Idaho Fish and Game officers came across three men who were attempting to use a combination of modern technologies to gain an unfair advantage in pursuit of wild game. Their actions not only violated the concept of fair chase, but also violated a number of hunting regulations. It all went down on October 18th when officers Tim Cluckin and Josh Leal responded to reports of a powered parachute flying low over the Mud Lake Wildlife Management Area. On the way to the Wildlife Management Area, officers could hear someone giving location instructions about some deer over the radio. The officers were able to make contact with two men carrying shotguns who admitted they had been communicating with the person in the powered parachute about locating deer. It also turned out that one of these men didn't even have a deer tag. Investigating further, the officers were able to determine that the pilot of the powered parachute was trying to locate deer hiding in the marshy reeds of the wildlife area and then communicate their location by radio to his two hunting buddies on the ground. This is a no-no because the use of aircraft to locate wildlife and communicating this information to someone on the ground is specifically forbidden in the big game hunting regulations in the state of Idaho. The three all pled guilty to their crimes in Jefferson County Court and received fines, a suspended jail sentence, and the revocation of their hunting privileges for a year. In addition to laws being broken, this also went against the concept of fair chase that responsible sportsmen embrace. If you want to find out more about this subject, I've got a website for you. It's called huntright.org. Again, huntright.org. Let's stick with the theme of technology and hunting, but in a better way. Next up on Northwestern Outdoors Radio, we've got a really interesting and innovative new product to tell you about. We're talking to Kevin Weir. He is the owner of Wide Angle Shooting Systems, and he has created a wide angle choke tube that will go ahead and spread that shot around from your shotgun like no choke tube you've seen before. Kevin, welcome to the show. Thank you, John. Glad to be here. Kevin, tell me a little bit about the story about these wide-angled choke tubes available from Wide Angle Shooting Systems. Well, John, three years ago, I had the vision that most shotgunners claim to miss their target by shooting too far in front or too far behind. You never hear anybody saying, I shot above or below. And so I pictured a bird, a mallard, or skeet trying to fly through a line of pellets and, and just took the idea from there and just started drawing and, and writing notes and, and ideas and, and came up with a choke tube that spreads patterns horizontally are, are in a rectangular oval type pattern versus the standard round pattern. This is really interesting to me, and you're right. I think that the typical hunter does shoot either behind or in front of the bird. I'd like to tell you folks that all birds are shaped like basketballs, and that would be perfect for the typical circular shot pattern that you have, but they're not. So this actually speaks to me. It's really interesting. Have you been out in the field and actually tried it bird hunting? I have, absolutely. And at 30 yards, which is what I try to gauge these tubes for, it's devastating. I mean, how can you miss with a pattern that's four feet wide? Oh, trust me, Kevin. I can always miss. <laughs> if you ever go hunting with me, you'll see that. However, I, I like the idea that this might help me miss less. And that's why I got you on the air. When you when you contacted me about this, I thought, you know, this, this is really slick. I think this could help a lot of hunters, but not just hunters. I, I think it could also help for, for other things as well. For instance, trap shooting, skeet shooting, I immediately thought that this would be great for that sort of thing. Oh, skeet shooting, absolutely. Your targets are always flying horizontal. And the interesting thing about these tubes is, depending on your target presentation, you can rotate that pattern so that you're accommodating a horizontal bird or skeet. Or if you're at a sporting clays or five stand and you've got a, a vertical target coming at you, you can rotate this pattern around, lock it in place, and your pattern is suddenly going vertical. 
so that you can decrease the lead you need for that, that dropping or rising bird. This is really interesting to me. And, folks, you're going to have to check out this website. We'll give it to you again at the end, but it's basically WideAngleShootingSystems.com. The, the choke tube you're going to see, it's a screw-in choke tube, and it's shaped much different than your typical choke tube. And you're going to see what I'm talking about once you get there. But I like the fact that you can adjust it, like you said, so that you can basically have that pattern go horizontal or vertical. That is really interesting. What are some other applications in terms of hunting or self-defense that this would be useful for? Well, two instances, John. I had a hunting guide from Alaska contact me who takes people out for sea ducks and divers and such, and he has one spot where the birds come in at a 45-degree angle to the horizon. And when he found out he could rotate these tubes to a 45-degree angle on horizontal, he just went nuts. You know, because that's every single bird that comes into this one spot. And he wanted several tubes that he could pass out to his clients so that the kill rate would go up. Another application would be, say, a home defense or if you're in a situation where you need to feel like you have to have buckshot. These tubes will shoot any buckshot, number four up to double lot, three inch, three and a half inch shells, and give you a horizontal pattern that's no more than 18, 20 inches high and 30 to 36 inches wide. Fascinating stuff. Now, let's talk about what shotguns this choke tube is available for. Again, folks, it's the Wide Angle Choke Tube. It's available from Wide Angle Shooting Systems. Kevin is from Western Washington. In fact, where is home for you exactly? Tacoma, Lakewood area? I, I'm living in Bremerton. Okay. Uh, the Bremerton's right, a good right town. Right above the naval base. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and get back to the choke tubes, though. Is this just for 12 gauge or for other gauges as well? And, and what brands of shotguns will it fit in? Well, we're going strictly with 12 gauge at the moment since that takes 90% of the market. Sure. Being a startup company, that's what you got to do. My shotguns have always been Remington, and so that's what I have. That's what I started experimenting with. And so these tubes currently are available for Remington rim choke barrels. We will be expanding into the Benelli Beretta market and or Winchester, Browning, Mossberg market within the next few months. Looking forward to that. Folks, I, I love getting people on the show who are just starting out, especially when they have a product like this that holds a lot of promise. And that's exactly what we've got here. Whether you are a skeet and trap shooter or an upland bird hunter or a duck hunter or just want something for self-defense, you got to check this out. It's the Wide Angle Choke Tube. It's available from Wide Angle Shooting Systems. The website, again, WideAngleShootingSystems.com. That's WideAngleShootingSystems.com. One more question, Kevin. How much do these cost? Right now, the current price is $90 a tube, and I'll ship it straight to your house. Hopefully within two to three days of receiving your order, it'll be at your house. Well, there you go, folks. Perfect Christmas gift, and it's not too late for this hunting season either. That's the Wide Angle Choke Tube from WideAngleShootingSystems.com. Check it out, and I think once you see it, you're going to be as intrigued as I am. Kevin, thanks for telling us all about it on Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Thank you, John. I'd like to tell you I just brought down that buck, <laughs> but I didn't. I missed. And you know why I missed? Because of the scope I've got on my rifle. You see, my friends told me to get a Leupold rifle scope. Why? Well, because Leupold is America's optical authority. They make a huge variety of quality scopes for every need, and they make them right here in the Northwest. Unfortunately, I didn't listen. I used the cheap scope that came with this rifle when I bought it. And when it came time to pull the trigger, well, let's just say things were a little blurry. Now, I've got nothing to look forward to except a long, empty-handed walk back home. Next time I come out into the field, there's going to be a loophole scope on my rifle. And next time, I'm not going to miss. Loophole rifle scopes. Check out the whole line at loophole.com and look for them at a sporting goods store near you. Ah, the great outdoors. I'm ready for a great weekend of camping at this remote campground. But first, I think I'll invite my camp neighbors over for a meal of fire-roasted hot dogs and baked beans. dum de dum dum de dum Hi, neighbors. I just came over to... Pizza! Uh, hey, is that pizza you're eating? How did you get pizza out in the middle of nowhere? Pizza! Thanks. Oh, mmm, mmm. This is delicious. A pizza oven operated on a propane canister and another on the top of your camp stove? And they're both made 
made by Cam Chef? I know Cam Chef made great stuff for outdoors cooking, but this? I've got to get one of these pizza ovens from Cam Chef. No more beans and weenies for this guy. From now on, it's artisan pizza for me when I'm camping. Pizza! The Camp Chef Pizza Oven. Bake your own artisan masterpiece on your back patio or at the campground. Find out more at your local sporting goods dealer or at CampChef.com. More habitat equals more wildlife. Pheasants Forever is working hard every day to ensure there's more wildlife habitat for the future. Join the Habitat Leader and help create wildlife habitat in your community. To join us, go to pheasantsforever.org. Welcome back to Northwestern Outdoors Radio. It's time again for news and reports from the field, brought to you every week by the folks at Mardon Resort at Eastern Washington's Potholes Reservoir. Duck and goose hunters continue to bang away at the birds in the fields and wasteways around the Columbia Basin. Bank fishers at Potholes Reservoir's Medicare Beach are catching rainbow trout up to 20 inches long. Those are some nice trout. And boat anglers are using blade baits to catch walleye. The Mardon Fishing Dock continues, believe it or not, to produce perch and crappie on days with no wind. And you'll be happy to know you can now fish off the docks for free on Fridays. That's right. Just check in at the store on any given Friday between now and March 1st. Ask for a dock pass and you'll get it for free. If you want to do it upright, book a stay at a park cottage, camper cabin, or motel room, or bring your RV and make a weekend of it or a couple of fun days of fishing and hunting. Mardon Resort is the place, and the website is mardonresort.com. That's mardonresort.com, where the fish bite, but we don't. We start off our news by telling you that Oregon salmon anglers and conservationists are righteously upset over money that is not being spent as it should to help salmon. Rob Davis with the Oregonian reports 32,000 individuals have ponied up an extra $30 each every other year for special salmon license plates to put on their vehicles. They've been told that part of that money would go to the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board or OWEB. This board was supposed to use the money to fix culverts under roadways, which often stop salmon from migrating in streams because the culverts become blocked with debris or, by design, don't allow fish to make their way upstream. Well, it turns out not a single penny of the money, over $4.5 million of money, has been used for this purpose. Instead, OWEB has been using it for things like paying the salary of a board small grants administrator and to update their board website. Terry Thompson, the former state legislator who authored the 1997 bill creating the salmon license plate, is infuriated, stating the money was meant for projects on the ground, not a Salem bureaucrat salary. Thompson went on to say, that wasn't what it was designed to do at all. If they're going to do that, I'll go to the legislature and get them to fix it. I hope you do, Terry. This torques me off as well as it should everyone who spends dollars on salmon conservation only to find out their money isn't being used for that. If you're upset about this like I am, might I suggest a call to the governor's office in Oregon that just might get some attention focused on an issue I doubt OWEB plans on doing anything about. In other news, a hunter was stalked by wolves from the Smackout Pack in Northeast Washington this fall and had to shoot one of the animals. That's the fascinating story brought to our attention, but not brought to our attention by the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Instead, it was brought to our attention by the Stevens County Cattlemen's Association. It all took place on October 30th when an elk hunter looking for game saw a black wolf skirting him about 15 yards away. The hunter yelled at the wolf and waved his arms at it, but instead of leaving, the wolf trotted out in front of the hunter. The hunter shot in the air to scare it. That didn't work. The black wolf was joined by three other wolves that started closing in on him. One of the wolves then came at him, and the hunter shot it, hitting the animal in the shoulder. Only then did the wolf pack retreat. The hunter reported the incident to the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, but the Stevens County Cattlemen's Association is calling the agency out for not letting the public know about this pack, touted by environmental groups as a quote-unquote success story because non-lethal methods have deterred this pack from preying on livestock in the area. However, Cattlemen's Association President Scott Nielsen says the efforts are having a troubling effect. In his words, 
what we are seeing is a group of wolves that are not afraid of people, are not afraid of guns, and were willing to stalk a man who was alone in the woods. These wolves have been totally desensitized to people by the same methods that the environmental groups are saying are effective for livestock operations. What we are creating here are killers that view people as possible prey. This is a serious threat to public safety. Those again are the words of President Scott Nielsen from the Stevens County Cattlemen's Association. This is a really interesting story and it's one that's going to have me looking over my shoulder the next time I'm hunting in wolf country. Meanwhile, a grizzly bear's 2,800 mile walkabout across Montana and Idaho is baffling biologists. From the outdoor press room, we learn Ethel, a 20-year-old female grizzly, logged some 2,800 miles through Montana and Idaho between 2012 and this November, including a stroll through Lolo, Montana. In what may be the understatement of the year, Chris Servine with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service was quoted as saying, she has had some really bizarre travels, to which I can only say, wow, you think? Personally, I think this is incredible. I think Ethel, the walkabout grizzly, and OR7, the wandering wolf, ought to hook up near a campfire some night. The tales they could tell about their respective travels over a few drinks would no doubt be epic. Turning our attention to field reports, Christmas bird counts are kicking off around the Northwest and they provide some interesting results. Take Montana, for example. According to an article in the Birding Wire, there were 32 different Christmas bird counts in Montana last year. Missoula had the most participants on their count with 113 observers, but most of Montana's counts had fewer than 20 observers participating. There were 37 count first, as they call them, established in 2012 to 13, with Missoula having two state first records that were a Swainson's thrush and a lesser goldfinch. Other count firsts included a cackling goose, a spotted sandpiper in Big Fork, and a pie-billed grebe in Bozeman. For the first time in 2012 to 13, five counts reported 80 or more different species seen. Stevensville saw the most with 89, Missoula recorded 87, and 80 different species were seen at the Nine Pipe National Wildlife Refuge. In 2012 to 13, snowy owls had a respectable year with 11 birds counted on four separate counts. Also that year, the most abundant species statewide was the Canada goose with over 67,000 individual birds recorded. That same year, trumpeter swans, 274, outnumbered tundra swans at 182. In summary, the total number of species seen in Montana's Christmas bird counts in 2012 was 210 species, with three new species added last year. In case you were wondering, the first Montana count took place in Bozeman in 1908, and the youngest count is starting this year in Shelby and Cutbank. You can find out more about the bird counts taking place in Montana this month and participate yourself at mtaudubon.org. That's mtaudubon.org. We've got a fishery report from Lake Chelan and North Central Washington, courtesy of Anton Jones, the owner of Daryl and Dad's Guide Service. Turns out winter fishing for Mackinac continues to be hot on Lake Chelan. Other fishing that will warm you up on a cold winter's day includes bank fishing or trolling for planter-sized rainbow trout in this big lake or heading to nearby Roses Lake where planted trout are biting so well that most anglers have been limiting in less than an hour. Anton recommends using a downrigger to troll 220 to 245 feet deep for the lake trout in Lake Chelan. You'll want to fish within three to five feet of the bottom. Keep your speed around 0.8 to 1.3 miles an hour. Glow in the dark smile blaze from Max Lure in front of a four inch needlefish squid rig is doing the trick. Try baiting it with a piece of northern pike minnow, also known as squawfish, and then put some krill scent on that and you're going to get some deep water strikes. If you want to catch the trout from shore, well, go ahead and use some dough bait. The uh, hot color right now is American Wildfire from Pot Skis. And you can also catch them trolling Max Lure mini cha cha squitters behind a Max Lure triple lot double D Dodger. Find out more about fishing lakes in north central Washington or booking a trip with Daryl and Dad's Guide Service by going to their website at DarylandDads.com. That's DarylandDads.com. I've been fishing with them a few times. They're great people and you'll have a great time. 
Next up, we're checking in with Brad Snook at the Sports Corral in Joseph, Oregon. Great little sporting goods store in Northeast Oregon. If you drop by, you're going to find all that you need to get outfitted for your next fishing or hunting expedition. Brad, what's going on out there in terms of fishing in Northeastern Oregon this week? Well, good news is temperatures are uh, picking back up. We have dealt with ice and the ice left and when the flow came up, so did the fish. So we have had some good fishing reports on the Imnaha River and not so sure about the Wallawa yet, but also the Grand Round. So on the Grand Run, on the Imnaha, we're talking summer steelhead. Are these basically all cookie cutter six pounders we're talking about here or some a little bit bigger? That's pretty nice fish for us. Marginally a few more bigger, but uh, that's pretty good fish for us. Well, I'll, I'll catch four to six pound steelhead all day <laughs> and be happy. So are, are people using basically a, a, a jig under a slip float and maybe casting a streamer? Is that how they're doing it? Uh, yes, very definitely that or blue fox spinners. You can never go wrong with a blue fox spinner. Okay, so that's the steelhead side of things. Anything happening in Wallawa Lake right now? I, I know that's probably a little under the radar, but I know those kokanee and trout are there all year long. Very quiet at Wallawa Lake. I'm not sure that I've talked to a fisherman in two weeks or better gone that way. Okay, and turning to hunting, how's it going out there? It was good bull seasons this year, uh, good medium quality bulls. I think it was a successful year that way overall. What about chucker hunting? I, I would imagine, especially when you're you're talking towards the Imnaha and Hell's Canyon, that there's got to be some really good chucker hunting if you're willing to put in the miles and hike up those ridges. It's right at snow line, and uh, yes, there's ri the ridges uh, will hold them gently, but it's more in the exercise zone right below the snow is probably your best friend. There you go, folks. If you want to go chucker hunting or maybe steelhead fishing, it's a good time to go. And again, stop by the Sports Corral and Joseph to go ahead and get the latest on what's going on to get outfitted for success as well. Brad, thanks for telling us all about this, and I wish you a very Merry Christmas, my friend. Merry Christmas, John, and nice to talk to you again. Listen up, steelheaders. Fishing jigs under slip bobbers is one of the best ways to hook up with a metalhead this season, and Max Lure Company has got two jigs you have got to have. The Glow Getter is a marabou jig with a stout hook that's perfect for waters where no bait is allowed. When you can use bait, tie on a rock dancer. Tip it with a shrimp and put some oil on the scent collar, and before you know it, you'll be catching some of the best fighting fish around. The Glow Getter and Rock Dancer jigs, only from Max Lure Company. You demand quality performance from your binoculars, whether you use them in the field, on the water, or at a stadium. But you don't want to spend a fortune. That's where the BX McKenzie binoculars from Leupold come in. These armored, waterproof binoculars are both comfortable and dependable. Look for your McKenzie binoculars at quality sporting goods retailers near you. BX McKenzie bringing your world into sharper focus only from Leupold. We're back with one last cast from John Cruz on Northwestern Outdoors Radio. Let's run through some upcoming events before we go. Schaefer State Park in southwest Washington is a good place to take the kids this Sunday the 14th at 1 p.m. because the annual Ewell Log Hunt will be taking place there. Go on a search through this lakeside park near Elma, and once you find that Ewell Log, you can warm yourself by the fire while sipping hot chocolate, eating cookies, and listening to Christmas music. Sounds kind of nice, doesn't it? A unique way to enjoy the lights of Christmas can be found at the Oregon Aquarium in Newport, where a sea of lights will be illuminating the aquarium every Saturday and Sunday through December. I understand Santa Claus will be there as well, and he will even be telling stories to the kids, but not on a big chair near a fireplace. Nope, he's going to be underwater swimming with the fishes. That would be a sight to see. Racing into the week ahead, you may want to mush your way to West Yellowstone from December 18th to the 20th for the Rodeo Run Sled Dog Races. Things kick off Thursday at 5.30 p.m. with a parade, followed by a chance to meet the mushers and their dogs. Races will happen on both Friday and Saturday, starting at 9 a.m. at the Old Airport. You can find out more at wysleddograces.com. And if you're looking for a memorable adventure this Christmas season, make reservations to go on a candlelight tour of the caverns at Lewis and Clark Cavern State Park in West Central Montana. The two mile guided tours involve hiking through the snow before entering the caverns which you explore by candlelight just like the early cavern explorers did 
Admission is $15 for adults, $8 for kids. Reserve your spot now for tours taking place throughout the day on the 20th, the 21st, the 22nd, the 27th, and 28th by contacting the staff at Lewis and Clark Cavern State Park. That's all for this week. Like I said at the top of the hour, I'd like to thank everyone who tuned in last week that took part in our annual Christmas gift giveaway show. If you get a chance, check out our Facebook page. It's Northwestern Outdoors Radio. We're always posting information there that doesn't necessarily make it on the show. And we've got a website too, northwesternoutdoors.com. You can dig deeper and uh, find out more about our guests, get previews of the upcoming show, and listen to last week's show as well. Another place you can listen to our show on the internet is at Reno Viola Outdoors. Outdoors.com. We are one of the shows that is on this internet station dedicated to Outdoors Radio. There's actually 30 different Outdoors Radio shows that are there. It's RenoViolaOutdoors.com. Great internet channel to listen to as you make your way through your day. It is the Christmas season. I hope you're enjoying it. Until next time, take care, God bless, and make it a point to spend some time outdoors. Outdoors.